Brian Fuller is returning to the Vine Morning Show. Monday, March 5th, you'll hear familiar voices in new time slots. Mark Wells is in the afternoon. Jimmy Bass will host Rock Solid Jukebox in the evenings. And Jenny Lee will continue her slot in the midday. Change is good. And it's coming to the Vine Monday, March 5th. The best Christian music. 90.9 The Vine. 90.9 The Vine, in conjunction with Ariasports.net, proudly presents The Sports Cow. The Sports Couch is the area's only locally produced weekly sports show that is live on FM radio and also streamed live on both of our websites at Ariasports.net and WBYN.org. Who will be on the couch this morning? Let's find out. The Sports Couch is on the air right now. And hello again, sports fans. Welcome to another edition of the Sports Couch here on a Saturday morning. We've got a nice, sunshiny weather here. Boy, the weather is uh, kind of crazy out on the East Coast with that nor'easter, though. And then you said mudslides out on the West Coast there, Yeah, Danny? torrential rain, fall Ooh, with mudslides. Well, we're lucky and uh, blessed to be right here in the Midwest. And we had a lot of great basketball action around the area last night. And several coaches going to be on the show with us. This morning as well, coaches who were in either regional championships or sectional championship games last night. So we'll get to those coaches here in just a moment. And, uh, Danny, why don't you go ahead and uh, jump into some scores, and then we'll get our first guest on. All right. At Whitehall, Oakville advances 62-51 over Madison. They win that sectional championship. Uh, Central A&M, 69. Nakoma's 56. Central A&M will be at the SIU Arena to take on the Goreville Block Cats, who were 48-44 winners over Sessor at Hardin County last night. In 2A, the Pinckneyville Panthers look like they're on a destination run with a 56-37 victory over Trenton Westland. At Mount Carmel, in a battle up there, Mount Carmel defeats T-Town 48-47, setting up a Pinckneyville-Mount Carmel matchup at SIU on Tuesday night at 7.30. At Marora Foresight, Bloomington Central Catholic 56, Monticello 34. At Waterloo, in one of the bigger upsets of the night, Columbia 55, Alton Marquette 53 in overtime. Marquette was undefeated going into that game. Springfield Southeast 94, Lincoln 81. That was at Rochester. At Paris, Champaign Central 76, Effingham 45. At Mount Vernon, the Centralia Orphans defeat Salem 57-44. At Muhammad Seymour, Muhammad 72, Urbana 61. At Highland, East St. Louis 64, Highland 54. That sets up a Centralia East St. Louis matchup at Centralia next week. And at Carbondale, another Surprise of the night, Marion defeats Carbondale for the second time in two weeks, 61-59 for a victory there at Carbondale. So that was a roundup of the 1A and 2A from around, and some 3A from Southern Illinois last night. Setting up uh, the SIU Arena, like I said, it's going to be Goreville taking on Moeka Central A&M at 6 o'clock, and they'll face Goreville. And at 7, it's going to be Pinckneyville. 7.30, it'll be Pinckneyville versus Mount Carmel. And in the uh, 3A sectional at Centralia next week, you're going to have uh, the Orphans against East St. Louis on one side of the bracket, and then you're going to have Marion going up against um, mm, uh, Columbia. And the other side of the bracket. Yeah, they beat so, uh, Old right, Market. Right, so that's going to be an interesting Class 3A sectional up at Centralia next week. So, uh, yeah, a lot of surprises around the area and some close games. Um, Salem gave uh, Centralia all they wanted last night, but the Orphans did prevail there, 57-44, as you mentioned. Guests on the show this morning, we're trying to connect right now with Coach Andy Fehrenbacher of the Salem Wildcats to talk about uh, the great season they had and the effort they put forth last night, trying to connect with Andy. I'm sure he's probably talking to some other 
uh, folks this morning as well, so hopefully we'll connect with him here shortly. Tyler Buss from Mount Carmel Aces is going to be on the show with us this morning. You know he's got to be thrilled after that win over T-Town last night. And so he's going to join us. Todd Tripp, the head coach of the Goreville Black Cats, will join us. And on the other side of that game, Shane Garner from Cesar Valier will also join us. And those are a couple teams that play each other four times this year, Danny, and they split 2-2. Yeah, uh, those two teams just match up well size-wise. And uh, it was just that uh, Goreville got in a little foul trouble early on. And mm-hmm. then they come out in the third quarter, and they outscored Cesar 19-6 to in that third quarter. And that was the deciding point of the game. Uh, yeah. Cesar uh, had a lot of good looks in the second half. And balls just wouldn't go it just wasn't their night you know you just hear that every once in a while some night it's just not your night and it wasn't Sessor's night uh goreville uh on tuesday night won the first sectional basketball game in school history yeah how about and that? last night they won the first sectional championship in school history so you know maybe they're a team of destiny yeah that's uh that's really pretty cool uh, also, we're going to visit with Gus Gillespie, the head coach of the Marion Wildcats. You mentioned uh, the big upset last night as Marion went into Carbondale and, and beat them in the championship game 61-59. And Marion trailed by 14 points in the fourth quarter of that game and came back and won that. Uh, what a win that is for Coach Gus Gillespie of, of Marion. And, uh, you know, Marion better do what they can to keep him there. That's all I can say. Uh, because uh, he has come in and turned that program around. I don't know how many years it's been since Marion has won a regional, but I can tell you it's a bunch. Oh, yeah. A bunch. You know, and uh, I, I don't know. The coaching carousel looks like it's going to be an interesting ride yes. starting next month. Uh, yes, there's a lot of ramblings out there of coaching changes that uh, either have already started or are about to take place. So we already know that Mike Waldo is done at Edwardsville. And so you know that Edwardsville is going to go after a high-profile coach to replace him. And so then the dominoes start to fall. When somebody moves to go to Edwardsville, then that opens up other openings and so on and so forth and, you know, one thing after another. Yeah, Eric Griffith uh, is stepping aside down at Meridian, so Mm -hmm. they'll have an opening there. We already know that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there's a lot of other rumblings going around southern Illinois, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, and uh, the same is true in football, too. We already knew that, about uh, five or six openings in football, and I think we're going to see maybe at least that many openings in basketball, too, here real soon. I talked with a guy last night, and he said he sat down at breakfast yesterday morning and just started writing, and he sees 15. <laughs> like I say, a domino effect. Yeah, yeah, he said looks like there could be as many as 15 openings. Right, a domino effect. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to uh, try one more time here to get a coach a hold of uh, Coach Andy Fernbacher this morning. I, I assume he's probably talking to some other media right now, and that's understandable. Uh, we'll try to connect with him, though, and be right back here on The Vine and on areasports.net. Stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, the Vine and Areasports.net. Underwriting on the Vine is provided by Roadhouse Harley-Davidson in Mount Vernon. When you're looking for competitive prices on quality Harley-Davidson motorcycles, look no further than Roadhouse Harley-Davidson in Mount Vernon. They have hundreds of new and used Harleys in stock and an incredible parts department as well. Plus, if you're looking for other Harley gear, such as shirts, hats, jackets, bandanas, and more, they have it. You'll love the selection and the price at Roadhouse Harley-Davidson. Located on the frontage road next to the interstate in Mount Vernon. 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine would like to thank Mount Vernon's newest resale store, Helping Hands Thrift Shop, for their financial support. Helping Hands Thrift Shop carries household items, clothing, furniture, music and videos, plus much more. And is committed to giving back to Jefferson County through organizations who honor God by helping others in need. Helping Hands Thrift Shop is located at 4110 Broadway in Mount Vernon, directly across the street from Hobby Lobby, and they accept donations at any time. Their hours are 10 to 5 Monday through Friday and 9 to 2 on Saturdays. They can be reached at 214-7891. 
Hey, welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. We have live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wbyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. We are uh, trying to connect with Coach Handy Fehrenbacher of the Salem Wildcats, but uh, not able to get through to him, and hopefully he will uh, call us back here at the studio in a, a few moments. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some pictures up on the screen, though, for those of you watching the video feed. Uh, shots from the game last night between Salem and Centralia. Uh, Salem jumped out to an early lead in that one, Danny. They led after one quarter, and I'm sure Coach Fehrenbacher had to be pleased with the start that his team came in last night because when they played the Orphans earlier in the year, they got blown out. But last night they came in, they were not intimidated, and they took it uh, right to the Orphans and, and got an early lead and, and led after one quarter. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, that Centralia's got a good team, but uh, there's been some teams pushing them to the limit here lately, and uh, the Salem Wildcats uh, have to be thrilled with the season they've had. You know, they go starting that new Cahokia Conference, Randy, and they go over and they win that first year out. Yeah. Uh, Andy's made some major strides there at Salem. Including, uh, you know, beating Trenton Westland twice this year uh, in that conference. And so uh, a lot to be proud of for the – the Salem fans and the players and, and the coaching staff. Uh, you see on the screen right now, if you're watching on areasports.net, you see their post player, Cord Brown, on the left, uh, posting up against Javon Williams last night. That was an interesting matchup to watch in the game at Mount Vernon last night. And then you see on the right side of the screen there, uh, Damon Crosby hitting uh, one of his three-pointers from the top of the key. Uh, he had a, a good game last night. He fouled out in that action last night at, uh, at Mount Vernon in that Class 3A regional. And uh, you see a couple of other shots there, uh, one from Lindner and uh, some other ball handling going on there in the game between Salem and Centralia last night. But, uh, again, all in all, a, a great effort by uh, the Wildcats. Take nothing away from the Orphans. I mean, they came in as the heavy favorites, and they did prevail 57-44. to 44. But um, I think there's a lot of people around southern Illinois that didn't think Salem would have a chance in that game. But they, uh, they were there. They got the, uh, the game down to four points and had the ball down four points and you know we're trying to set themselves up for a, a shot which you know they just didn't get and had they hit a three in that situation got it down to one uh who knows what uh, would have happened from that point but that's why you play the game and again a uh, a great year great season for the salem wildcats and coach andy fernbacher and and you remember danny when we first interviewed andy after he took the job right. at salem one of the things he told us was what Give me three years, and I'll get this thing turned around, and this has been year three. Right, and and true to his word, he has definitely turned them around. So uh, hats off to to uh, Coach Fehrenbacher and uh, everybody up there at Salem for a job well done. Uh, the Orphans, again, they will move on, uh, and they'll be hosting the sectional at their place next week. Their opponent will be East St. Louis, which has been kind of a uh, – topsy-turvy troubled season for East St. Louis. They certainly have the talent and the athleticism, but uh, they went through three coaches this year. They're on their third coach in the same season. <laughs> we talk about coaching turnovers. There, yeah. There's you a coaching turnover right there. That's right. Uh, leading them right now is the uh, former assistant at Cahokia, uh, who's coaching them right now. And uh, But they went into Highland last night, and they won the regional championship in Highland by a score of 64-54. to 54. So uh, the Flyers We'll be taking on the Orphans next week in the first semifinal at the Class 3A sectional. And on the other side of the bracket, it's going to be the Marion Wildcats, again, taking on um, Columbia. Columbia, the upset winner last night over Alton Marquette in overtime, 55-53. I would love to have seen that game. That should have been a dandy oh, game man. there. You know, Alton was undefeated heading into that game, weren't they? Yes, they were. They were. And I think they had played each other uh, a time or two during the year, so they knew each other pretty well. But uh, Marquette had always got them, but Columbia got them last night. And they led most of the game. They led almost the entire game. And Alton Marquette got ahead briefly right before the end of regulation, and then it got tied and sent to overtime, and Columbia took care of business. Um, so You know, it's just one of those deals. A lot of times you just hope to get it to overtime mm -hmm. if you're some of these teams. And when you get there, it seems like if you can get there, uh, it turns into yeah. a big deal. Uh, if you want to touch upon some more of the scores, my phone's ringing here. Okay. All right. Looking at some other scores, Whitehall, Oakville defeats Madison last night, 62-51. They're headed to Jacksonville to compete in that super sectional up there. Uh, 
Moika A&M defeats Nokomis 69-56. They'll make a long trip south to take on Goreville. That'll, Boy, that'll be about a four-hour bus ride. That will be a long ride. Hey, we do have Andy Fernbacher on the line with us right now. We want to bring him in on the show. Good morning, Andy. How are you? Okay. Hey, great, uh, great season for your Wildcats. Tough loss last night against the Orphans, but I thought it was a very valiant effort last night. You led after one quarter, and... You were in it all the way and uh, had a shot, got it down to four points and just couldn't quite get over the hump, but what an effort by your Wildcats. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, um, very proud of, of our kids. Um, you know, I, I, I thought we started here three years ago. I had these seniors and sophomores, and, uh, you know, they, they just worked and hung together and, and really understood what, you know, what I expect and what, what I, you know, uh, uh, was trying to do, and, and they really responded to our coaching staff, and uh, it, you know, it paid off their senior year, and um, you know, just super proud of them. Uh, it, it, and like you said, it was it was a great season. And, and last night, um, you know, it was just one of those games. I know a lot of people didn't give us much of a chance. We were big time underdogs, and, and you know, I get that, man. That's that's just that's the way it is, and that's fine. Uh, I was just happy with the way that our kids uh, played aggressively. Um, you know, they, they hung in there. Um, you know, we, we had played them at, at Christmas time at their place, and it wasn't pretty. I mean, they, they, they thumped us pretty good. Right. But, you know, but uh, to come back and, to, and to, you know, have the lead early on, be within a few points at half, you know, get it to within. Actually, we got to within three at one point early in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but uh, when, when Crosby fouled out, uh, we missed some shots. They have some guys step up and make plays, and, and that was a difference. Yeah, well, uh, you know, and let's be honest, you there's you didn't get any breaks last night either uh, along the line, and, but you played through those breaks, and, and you guys, uh, you know, your players kept an even keel out there. They weren't complaining. They had allowed you to do that, and and uh, they tried to play through it, but they, they didn't get any breaks last night, but they played hard. Yeah, you know, uh, and, and we talked about that, and I, I, I told our guys going in, I said, don't expect it because it's not going to happen. So, um, you know, we, we knew it. Um, but we rose above that, and we just, you know, just played and and uh, competed to to the best of our ability. And really, you know, with high school kids, that's what you want. And you know, it's unfortunate sometimes uh, the way things go. But uh, again, just just proud of our kids' efforts. Well, absolutely, a lot to be proud of, and. Uh... Uh, you know, you win the Cahokia Conference, and uh, you know your first year in, including the wins over Trenton Westland, and and that's a lot to be proud of, and that's a mantle that you can hang up and and be able to remember for a long time. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, this was our first year in the Cahokia, and, and I thought that um, you know we we made a little noise. You know, we we came in and and uh, was able to to win the conference and and get some big wins over some quality teams. I mean, we. Out of the 16, uh, there were three playing last night, you know, with us and Columbia in the regional championships and, and Westland in the sectional championships. So, um, and, you know, other teams that are traditionally pretty good, too. So it, it's a tough it's a tough conference. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we started out 0-2, and, and then we rattled off eight straight to finish the conference season. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was uh, very nice to, to be able to – to reach that goal, and that's uh, something the kids will always remember. Well, I know we're about out of time, but one more thing I want to bring up here before we let you go, Andy, and that is your, your crowd support last night. I'll tell you what, Salem really impressed me. They turned out in force last night at Shagnon Gym in Mount Vernon. you got to tip your hat to the Salem folks. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we, we greatly appreciate the support. Uh, you, you could just kind of feel it as, as the season from the beginning to uh, to this point, to the end of the season, that our crowd support really uh, started to grow. There was a lot of excitement. And, um, you know, I, I, it's just, again, whenever I started here three years ago, I told our kids, look, this is how we're going to do things. We're, we're going to play a certain way. We're going to compete. We're, you know, we're not going to complain or play like jerks or anything like that. We're just going to, we're going to play the game the right way. We're going to defend and and we're going to, you know, do all those things, the, the little things, just work real hard and, and try to represent Salem Community High School and, and, and the, mm -hmm. the town as, as well as we possibly could. And I think any time you do that, you're always going to have uh, people in town are going to rally behind that, win or lose. They're, they're going to be there because right. that's what they want to see. Yeah. They want to see kids doing things the right way. 
and uh, you know, and I feel like that, that that's what we were able to get, and um, and and you saw the, the result of that, like you said, we we had a mm-hmm. tremendous crowd last night, and uh, super proud of, of that, and, and just much appreciated. Um, you know, I know the coaching staff. We talked about that a lot, and and, and it's, it's big for the kids too. Yeah, going into the big game, able to look up and see all the green and everything. You know, it it, it really is. Uh, uh, something and it kind of that's a little extra motivation there. So we appreciate that, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, hopefully that's uh, a sign of things to come. All right, Andy. Well, hey, thanks so much for your time this morning on, on Sports Couch. We appreciate it. And again, congratulations on a terrific season, and uh, uh, enjoy the weekend and uh, rest up now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. I appreciate it, Randy. All right, Andy. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Andy Fahrenbacher, head coach of the Salem Wildcats, and. Uh, they got him a good one there, that's for sure, and uh, he's paying dividends, and you're really seeing it in that program and, and appreciate him coming on with us this morning. Uh, Danny, we're running through some more scores, and now I'm going to try to grab Tyler Buss here real quick, okay? All right. At Trenton Westland, the Pinckneyville Panthers put a stamp on their season last night. They defeat Trenton 56-37. Uh, their opponent at SIU on uh, <coughs> excuse me, Tuesday night will be the Mount Carmel Golden Aces. They defeat T-Town last night, 48-47, in a game that was just a great battle. It'll be interesting to hear the thoughts on that from Tyler. And he uh, joins us on the phone right now. Can Let's go ahead and bring him in, okay? Tyler Buss, head coach of the Mount Carmel Aces. Big win over T-Town last night. Good morning, Tyler. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys. Doing very well. Thanks for asking. Well, I can tell just through the telephone you're wearing a great big wide smile this morning. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a good night and a good morning, and, you know, it just – fact that we get to go you know track down some films and, and have another couple practices with our guys is, is very very exciting wow i tell you we kept getting updated scores from your game last night and man it just seemed like it was a battle and uh, you found a way to to grind it out and pull out the one point win walk us through it if you would yeah it was i mean what what an atmosphere for high school basketball you know probably the the best atmosphere i've played in or coached in you know it it was you know both teams just just i mean no seats empty in the whole joint and um, you know, it was. It was just a back-and-forth game, and I thought in the first half we, we really did not play very well, and a lot of that had to do with, with T-Town. You know, they, they really did a good job of kind of getting the game at the pace they wanted and, you know, kind of a slower pace, and, you know, things were very clogged in the lane, and we were just very stagnant offensively. I think, you know, we, we were able to get a steal and a, and a layup late to cut it to six, you know, right before the half, which I thought was, was important because, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, we didn't play very well offensively, and yet at halftime it's still a two-possession ball game, so... Now, our kids were still very confident at halftime, and, and basically we just told them we got to do two things. We got to our tempo has to be much better. We got to get out and run a little bit, and then offensively we didn't really run many of our sets and, and quick hitters and things like that. We spread the floor, went five out, and, and just tried to space the floor and, and give our guys some attacking lanes and some some, some spots where they could penetrate off the dribble. And you know they did a tremendous job of that in the second half. Well, Coach, uh, I'm sure the atmosphere up there last night was unbelievable. Uh, both teams uh, bring Montostras crowds with you, and I'm sure it was a packed house last night. Yeah, it was. And, you know, we, we told our guys before, and we actually practiced on on Thursday with, with some crowd noise, and, you know, we, we cranked the speakers up in our gym because we knew communication was going to be important, and we knew it was going to be very, very hard to communicate in a game like that. So, you know, our guys were, were prepared for that. But, yeah, it was just – you know, we, we, we played in the state championship game last year, but I would say that's the best atmosphere I've, I've coached in because it was just, you know, with, with that size gym and then how many fans were there with, you know, not an empty seat in the house and everybody on their feet loud the whole game. It was, it was, it was something really, really special. Well, your team's going to take off and make that trip south on Tuesday. You're going to take on the Pinckneyville Panthers. Uh, I'm sure you're just kind of on fact finding mission right now about them, but what, uh, what do you know so far? Yeah, you know, very, very good ball club. You know, we've, we've kind of followed them throughout the year, you know, not not from a scouting purpose, but just kind of keeping our eye on them, knowing that that could be somebody we could see down the road. You know, Coach a heck of a coach, and, you know, they, they do a great job. You know they're going to play just tremendous defense. You know, that's the one thing. You know, he's had good groups and really good groups and, and some that are just okay, but they always guard you. So, you know, you know that going in and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a, an interesting story. I spoke at, at Pickensville's uh, IBCA coaches clinic this fall and actually got to put their kids through some of our drills and some of the stuff we do with our high ball screen stuff. So I wish I would have would have made it more name tags and paid a little more attention when I, when I <laughs> was doing stuff down there. But 
Uh, you know, Coach Wagner's a, like I said, a tremendous coach, and you know, we'll have our hands full. But you know, we'll have a good day today. You know, scouting and, and trying to get a game plan together, and then we'll get our kids back in the gym mm-hmm. tomorrow and, and go to work. Well, how much more was uh, Marcotte involved in the uh, offense last night for you on the floor? Well, he was big early. Like I said, they were really, you know, making things difficult for us to get the ball inside to him. And, uh, you know, with the, again, that had a lot to do with our second half. We kind of spread the floor a little bit. He had some huge rebounds. He, he made his free throws, which he, he was something that, you know, as he's kind of been working himself back into, into playing shape, you know, he, he struggled from the line a little bit. But really the last two games has, has knocked down some really big free throws for us. But, you know, I'd say the, the, the best story on him was, you know, with, with 40 seconds left, we're, we got the ball in, in a timeout with the tie game. And, you know, conventional wisdom says you hold for one shot and make sure you know you get the last shot of the half or of the game. And he tells me, he says, Coach, if they're going to be up on me like that, let me go win the game. And there was no way I was going to tell him no in that scenario. He he wanted the ball, he wanted to take his guy, and he, he went from the top of the key and, and swept and got by his guy. And they were kind of out play, playing some pressure defense, and he finished. And you know that was that was obviously the, the biggest basket of the game. Well, Coach, uh, walk us through a little bit now on Tuesday. What time will Yunz get your process started, and uh, what kind of a bus ride, what time frame, and things like that? Yeah, we're still kind of piecing that together. I'd say you know we'll we'll uh, we'll get we'll get on it. We'll you know get a charter bus. And um, last year, I think we stopped about halfway to, to kind of let our guys get out a little bit and, and walk around and, and grab a drink at a gas station or whatever. So we'll take our time getting down there and. Definitely want to be down there by the time that first game starts. So that kind of gets your kids back on a on a normal time clock. You know, usually they're sitting there for the JV game, so now they're sitting there for the you know for the one A game, and um, you know they can kind of kind of get back into a normal normal game flow. And then and then after that, it's just it's just game on. Well, you know, uh, I anticipate there'll be a big crowd down there at the SIU Arena on Tuesday night. Uh, Goreville will have a big big group of fans down there i'm not sure about moika that's about a four-hour bus ride for them so there may not be a lot of people make that trip but then uh with you and pinckneyville there's going to be a big following with each one of those groups so uh should be a great night of basketball yeah i think so you know happy for coach trip and, and the job they've done there at goreville so you know that, that'll be a, a fun game to, to watch them play and then yeah i, I think you know this, this season our, our our even our road crowds have been tremendous you know we sold you know, 650 tickets for the for the game last night, and um, I, I fully anticipate we'll have a, a great crowd. And, and we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of guys, you know, former players and former students that are actually going to school at Carbondale. So we we think we'll have a, a nice size crowd down there for sure. Well, I'll help you a little bit with your scouting. You can go to the website there, and there is some Pinckneyville games on there from the BIT. Right. Well, well, we'll we'll be all over that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, quite a few from the BIT, as a matter of fact. Yeah. They played all those teams in there. So, hey, let's talk uh, a little briefly about your sister, Tyra. They uh, got a big win in the first game there of the Big Ten tournament. They got a, a quadruple overtime win over Michigan State, which was just unbelievable. But that, of course, takes a lot of energy out of you, and that might have been part of the issue when they came back and lost to Maryland yesterday, I assume, by 13. you think that played into that role? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it did. You know, playing – I think Tyra played 60 minutes. Uh, Kay Hill, the other senior, both played 60 minutes. I mean, right. you know, you're going on adrenaline at that point. But, yeah, I would say that that was definitely a factor. Uh, uh, games, you know, I was trying to follow as much as I could before our game. But it sounds like, you know, they were kind of hanging around, hanging around. And then, you know, they were just – Maryland was able to kind of pull away late. But, uh, but yeah, what a game. I, I can't tell you how many fans I had at, at our game last night saying, Coach, we can't do four overtimes tonight. We can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, we can't do four overtimes. That's right. That's that's difficult. Have you had a chance to talk to her since uh, the loss to Maryland? Yeah, she she gave me a she gave me a call last night, congratulated us, and you know she you could tell she was she was pretty bummed. Um, you know she obviously has put a lot of a lot of her energy into trying to get her team to the tournament, and it, you know it probably doesn't look real good right now. But hopefully they can they can get to the NIT and maybe host a game and and get to see her one last time at Assembly Hall. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask you, if you thought that uh, is going to keep them out of the tournament by losing to Maryland yesterday or if there was still maybe a, just a splinter of a chance of getting into the big dance. or. or yeah, what? I think maybe a sliver. I think there was a game that didn't go our way, too. I think mm-hmm. Nebraska was a, a, a team that we needed to stay ahead of. and you know, RPI, they were a little bit behind us, and then they beat Michigan last night, so I think that probably hurts a little bit, but... You know, irregardless, you know, hopefully she just, you know, gets to, gets to play another game and, um, you know, get to see her one last time.
Sure, right. Well, she's had a, a very special season and, of course, an incredible career. That, that's for sure. Well, I guess maybe she'll be able to come down and cheer you on Tuesday night then at the arena, right? Yeah, she, she better be. Yeah, she's got nothing else going on. She better be down there. I'll have to smile this time for her. That's the least she can do, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, you would think so, wouldn't you? Time uh, to pay back a little bit, huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let her just make that speech if she wants to. I mean, just, just to get her down there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got to ask you something else too. You know, it's it's one thing to win and go on down to the arena and, and get in that position, be in that lead eight. But you know, beating T Town, I know, is a special place for for you and the Bus family because T Town has haunted you guys in girls basketball and in boys basketball. It's and so anytime you get a win over T Town, it's something extra special, isn't it? No doubt about it. You know, that, that was something we talked to our guys a lot about, but. You know, for for a long time, it was, you know, Mount Carmel can't get over the hump with T-Town. Girls basketball, boys basketball, it didn't matter. You know, they were kind of that, that hurdle we we couldn't seem to, to crack. And, you know, I think, you know, getting them last year both in the Capital Classic and then again in the, uh, you know, in the, in the sectional was, was really, really important for our guys. And I think it played a part last night. You know, they, they believe that, you know, now it's our turn. You know, we, they've had their run and now... Now Mount Carmel's team, T-Town's going to have to worry about getting past it. You know, again, our guys did a good job of believing that last night and, and finishing it off. Well, the mental part of this game is so important, and you're right. Coming into that last night with confidence, knowing that you could, could play with them and beat them because you beat them twice last year, that had to really be an important role. Yeah, I think so. Again, our, our kids have, have really done a good job here of late of, of buying in and just believing that, you know, no matter the circumstances, up, down, whatever, that they've done a good job of, you know, we, we talk all the time about not riding the roller coaster, the ups and the downs, just keep keep steady, keep playing our game, and, you know, they did a, they did a great job of that. Yeah. Well, Tyler, we uh, congratulate you on the win last night. Best of luck as you prepare for Pinckneyville on Tuesday at the arena, and uh, we'll be down there watching you, all right? All right, thanks, guys. Always enjoy being on. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Bye-bye. That is uh, Tyler Buss, head coach of the Mount Carmel Aces, and uh, that is going to be a great matchup between the Aces and the Panthers on Tuesday night down at the arena. That Pinckneyville team is playing very, very well. Extremely well. To go into Trenton Westland and beat them like they did last night, oh, man, you know they're playing well because Trenton Westland's a very good team. They were on their home court last night, but it didn't matter to the Panthers. Nope, they just went and took care of business in Trenton. That was a team they had been looking forward to for quite some time oh, yeah. and ended in disappointment mm -hmm. last night. Right. Hey, when we come back, we're going to talk to Coach Todd Tripp, the head coach of the Goreville Black Cats. They are the Class 1A sectional champs. They're in the Elite Eight. We'll talk to him coming up next on the Sports Couch. Stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Bluford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon. And now on translator, W288CO Centralia, broadcasting at 105.5. A service of Real Life Radio Foundation. The best Christian music, 90.9. Now is the time to get ready for the mowing season, and Ben's Lawn Service and Trailer Sales in Benton is the place to start. Ben's Lawn Service and Trailer Sales offers a full line of Skag commercial riding, stand-on, and walk-behind mowers with innovation and attention to quality that's second to none. Ben's Lawn Service and Trailer Sales backs what they sell with top-notch service, along with free delivery of your new Skag mower. Ben's Lawn Service and Trailer Sales is located at 605 North Main in Benton. Their phone number is 433 and their website is benslawnservice.com. Are you going out of town for a vacation or a weekend getaway? What are you going to do with your dog? That's easy. There's Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare is your one-stop shop for overnight dog boarding, doggy daycare, as well as dog grooming, and obedience dog training. It's your dog's home away from home. and They will thrive, and they'll get one-on-one -on -one attention by a great staff. More information is available on the web at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. Jaggers Doggy Daycare, 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. 
105.5 and 90.9 The Vine thanks Wibbles Repair and Sales in McLeansboro for their monthly underwriting support of local Christian radio. They repair small engines and ag equipment, and they sell small engine parts, including oil filters and belts. They have agriculture aftermarket parts, interstate batteries, big truck parts, and truck lighting. As steel and Husqvarna dealers, they offer a wide variety of chainsaws, trimmers, and cutoff saws. Wibbles Repair and Sales in McLeansboro. Their phone number, 618-648-2227. Open Monday through Friday, Saturdays till noon. Hamilton County Flooring on the south side of the square in McLeansboro offers a full line of flooring, cabinets, and countertops for your home or business. Countertops or showers are available in granite, quartz, corian, custom marble, or ceramic tile. Their showroom includes a complete line of flooring available in ceramic tile, cork, bamboo, hardwood, vinyl, laminate, and carpeting, including name brands such as Armstrong, Bruce, Marazzi, Mulligan, Shaw, and Tarquette. We thank Hamilton County Flooring in McLeansboro for their support. Support for 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio is brought to you by Bird Watson, located at 1200 Main Street in downtown Mount Vernon. They are more than just a store that offers medical equipment. They now have two new lines of products available, Vera Bradley brand bags and scrubs along with shoes and scrubs from the Skechers brand. Their phone number is 618-242-2800. Bird Watson downtown, more than just medical equipment. Welcome back to the Sports Couch here live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites at areasports.net and the Vine website at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson along with Danny Ounselman live in studio and joining us right now is head coach of the Goreville Black Cats. They are the champions of the 1A sectional last night, a huge win over Cesar Valier. Dramatic fashion, 48-44. to It's Coach Todd Tripp. Good morning, Todd. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. You bet. Good to have you on the show, and what an exciting and thrilling game it was last night, and the fourth time that you played Cesar Valier this year, and uh, they had got you the last two times, but you came in last night, you took care of business, and you won a thrilling game by four points. Tell us about it. Yeah, you know, great game, great game, which you expect that, and from especially two teams that have seen each other four times and throw three times, but, uh, you know, they got a really good team, and uh, we, we know a lot about each other, and you know, we even even after we played each other, we continue to scout each other. So you just you try to learn more and more about each other. But uh, you know, it's a great game, and uh, we feel like we beat a, beat a real good team. Which you know, they're Black Diamond West champs this year, so we we know uh, how good they were. So. Yeah, Todd, your uh, team came in there last night, uh, got in a little bit of early foul trouble, but uh, when you come out that second half. You went on a 16-3 run in that third quarter, and then when you combine the first minute or so of the fourth quarter, it was actually a 19-6 run and really just took control of the game. Yeah, you know, that's something we talked about at halftime. We felt like we were in good position as far as we were <laughs> down six points. And, uh, and like you said, we had some guys in foul trouble that had to sit down and, and two of our two of our better players, you know, in Dunn and Webb. So uh, it to be where we to be where we were and to come come out second half, we felt like we was in good position to uh, to do some things. And you know, we we cleaned up our defense. And everybody knows we gave up three points that third quarter, and you know, that's that's what won the game for us right there. Yeah, the third quarter was the deciding factor in that game, and uh, your team made the plays. Uh, your team shot free throws well down the stretch. Uh, uh, Peyton Massey both nights uh, hit some key free throws down that uh, final run, and uh, I I had the pleasure of covering your team this week, and I was very impressed with your team, uh, the community support you had, and it's been a great week for Black Cat basketball because a lot of firsts has happened. Oh yeah, we're uh, you know never been to a sectional final game, so we got to do that and to win to win the sectional, it's, we're just adding to it and. You know, we, we hope we can continue to do that. We've done it in other sports, and to do it in boys basketball is, it is exciting. But, uh, you know, our community, you can't say enough about our town. So they back everything we do. And as you can tell, the crowd last night was just super. Yeah, you know, uh, 
that gym seats around 2,600 down there. I estimated there was about 2,400 people on hand. We had uh, almost 1,100 people on the website watch the game last night. So uh, a lot of interest in uh, that game down there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I told the kids, I, I try to tell them every time you're in a championship game or whatever with a good crowd, enjoy the crowd. Warm up, get loose, enjoy this a little bit. When it, when we when they throw the ball up and, and the tip's going on, you know, you got to concentrate what's going on between the lines. But, uh, you know, they made great memories for the sales. And, you know, kudos to, to Cecil Lear on a great year. And Coach Garner, they had a great year. And, you know, those kids, even though they lost, they experienced something special last night. Yes, they did. Uh well, talk a little bit about now the next move. You're going to make the trip to the SIU Arena, very uncharted territory for you guys. Like you said, last night was the first sectional championship in school history, so this will be the first trip to the super sectional. Uh, the anticipation and excitement has to be extreme in Goreville this morning. Oh, it's unbelievable. I think I'm going on about three hours sleep right now, but I don't feel tired. But, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to gather some information on, on our opponent and but, uh, I, you know, you're going to see a lot of black black and gold over at SIU, and it's going to be exciting times for sure, and uh, we know we will have the support that night. Well, uh, it's been a great season. Your team's now 22-11. and 11. Uh, When the season started, did you envision this group having this uh, chance to run this deep? You know, we did. We, we knew what we had coming back, and uh, the, these, this group, uh, especially, you know, they won Class M their eighth grade year. Uh, they've come into high school. They've been successful. We've won games. We won conference last year. We, we, they've won in baseball. They just they just find a way to get it done and, and, and be in ball games. And even when things don't go their way, they know how to keep their heads up and, and compete. And you know, after Christmas, we won the Sesame tournament. We we went through a little drought that we just we weren't playing good and. You know, you, you try to keep in your head you're going to have those times during the season, especially with our schedule that we play. And, you know, they have kept their heads up, and they've been very coachable. And we, we've changed some things up, and especially defensively, and they bought into that. And uh, I think that's what that's what's makes better. Uh, one thing I noticed about your team, you've got about eight kids or nine that you play kind of in a rotation. So you do have some depth and some things when uh, foul troubles hit you like they did a little bit last night. And uh, – that's what it takes to win big ball games, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, we I told the bench, I tell them all the time before we go out, hey, you might have 30 seconds, you may have three minutes, whatever, but you be ready and what, whatever you, whenever it's your time, give it all you got. And, you know, whatever you give is going to be special for this game. And, you know, we, we have, we played nine kids last several games. And some of them played three minutes, some of them played ten, but uh, they've been special to give rest. Or, or just come out and guard or whatever they have to do. They've done it, and uh, they've done a great job. Todd, when you play a, a team like uh, Cesar Valera that you know really, really well because you've played them three times already in the season, uh, there are, really are no secrets. I mean, you know what they're going to do. They know what you're going to do. It's just a matter of going out there and really executing your game plan, right? It, it is. You know, it, it makes it it makes it exciting as a coach because you're trying to find ways to tweak some stuff that, that you've done against them before or that they scouted you watching other games and you know I felt like we we ran some sets last night that we've kind of kind of, kind of changed up a little bit but you know we call them out a different way and we felt like we we executed those and that just makes you feel good when you, your team knows what you're doing and when you execute something like that down the stretch it, it just really makes you feel good. Well, Coach, uh, it had to be a very exciting time in your coaching career to get some of these victories here in this last run you're running. Uh, it, I know you probably don't allow things like that to come into view right now because you always got the big picture in your mind, but you still got to be very proud this morning. Oh, very proud. You know, we've we always we always we always preach at the beginning of the year we we want to be in a regional championship. That's where that's where you want to be and chance to win that regional plaque and, and I'll be honest with you the sectional plaque it, it's bigger and I like it a lot more than <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it's, it is it's exciting and I'm happy for our community uh, my assistant coaches did a great job it, they're, they're on point last night and throwing stuff at me and uh, kids are just just wonderful and so 
awesome time. I saw you and your assistant coaches doing a lot of hugging after the game last night on on the video. That was that was a fun thing to see. You know what? It's funny. I, I mentioned somebody last night. I said when you when you win games like this, it's funny. You see people you don't even think like each other, and they're all hugging out. <laughs> hey, that, that, that's a great way to bring people together. So that's like, right. <laughs> Everybody loves a winner, Coach. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Awesome. Well, Todd, we appreciate your time this morning. Again, congratulations on the sectional championship last night, 48-44 over Cesc Valier, and, and best of luck as you prepare for that super sectional battle Tuesday night down at SIU, and we'll be down there rooting for you. All right? Guys, I appreciate it. Thank okay, you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Coach Todd Tripp, uh, say he is excited, is, uh, to say the least, isn't it? Oh, yeah. He was uh, a very big emotional ride for him. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, he, he was. I mean, there was a lot of hugging going on at the end of that game last night, and it was heartfelt, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the nicer things was his wife and his two daughters. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, he turned around and went back up in the stands, I believe, didn't right. he? Right. Right, after he hugged the assistant coaches, he turned around and went back up in the stands. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Camera lady was on it. She was on it. <laughs> she was on it. Hey, we're going to talk to the other side of that picture last night. We're going to talk to Coach Shane Garner of the Cesarville Red Devils. What a season for them. And uh, I know a very emotional time for him as well. We'll talk to Coach Garner coming up next on the Sports Couch. Stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, the Vine and Areasports.net. Underwriting on the Vine is provided by B&C Bicycle Fitness in Mount Vernon. B&C Bicycle Fitness specializes in bikes for the beginning rider to the high-end racer and can equip you with a comfortable bike to enjoy a healthy, active lifestyle with family and friends. B&C Bicycle Fitness is a full-service bicycle shop and is located at 410 South 27th Street in Mount Vernon. Their phone number is 816-4077. B&C Bicycle Fitness in Mount Vernon where the adventure begins. Choosing a construction company is a big decision because many companies come and go. That's why Greenwald & Sons Construction is a name you can trust. With over 40 years of experience, Greenwald & Sons Construction in Wayne City and Mount Vernon specialize in residential and commercial construction, as well as remodeling. They'll be happy to talk to you about a church addition, business expansion, or new home construction. Greenwald & Sons Construction, the experts you can depend upon. Their number is 895-2044. Welcome back to the Sports Couch here live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson live in studio along with Danny Ounceman. Well, we talked to Coach Todd Tripp moments ago about last night's sectional championship game, and now let's talk to the other side of the uh, gymnasium. That's uh, Coach Shane Garner of the Cesarville Red Devils. They came up short last night, 48-44, but had just an incredible season, a lot to talk about and be proud of. Coach Garner joins us right now. Good morning, Shane. How are you? Very good. Good morning. How are you guys? Great. Good to have you on the show. I know it's tough after a loss like that last night. We do appreciate you joining us this morning. But uh, as we just said, uh, a lot to reflect on, a lot to be proud of for your Red Devils last night and, and uh, throughout the season, and what a battle it was with Goreville last night, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, it was just one of those things where, uh, you know, coming down, you know, we had, a, we had a little spell where we just couldn't put the ball in the hole, and uh, and they could. They went on a little run, and once we finally came out of it and uh, started chipping away, just just ran out of time at the end. Well, you had played each other three times previously. You had won two of those uh, those three, including the last two leading up into last night. And so you came into the game, I'm sure, with some confidence and knowing that you definitely uh, had taken care of business against them the, the two previous times. And so there really weren't a whole lot of secrets. You knew what they were going to do. They pretty much knew what you were going to do. It was just a matter of coming out and executing and hitting some shots. And uh, unfortunately for the Red Devils, uh, they just hit some more shots than you did. Absolutely. You know, I, I thought in the first half we, we did a fairly decent job of, uh, you know, defending and, and, and getting some buckets. And, you know, our shot selection maybe was a little little lack at some times. But, you know, we were up six there. And, and uh, you know, things were looking good. And then we come out in the second half and, uh, you know, we just couldn't, couldn't buy a bucket. Uh, you know, I think it ended up 
being like a 9-0 run, 11-0 run there for a little bit. And I think at one point in time, we were like 2 for 20 uh, in the second half. And, uh, you know, they made plays and uh, and made shots, and that's that's why they're moving on to Carbondale. You know, Shane, your team uh, kind of got behind late there in that fourth quarter, and it looked like <clears throat> Goreville was going to punch their ticket kind of early, and then your team kind of went on a little – Fury run right there at the end of the game to get it down to a four-point game, and your kids fought hard to the very end. It was just you had a lot of good shots, shots that you wanted. Uh, some nights it's just not your night. You know, you know, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we were, you know, talking on the bus ride home, you know, a week ago, you know, we were playing, you know, Woodlawn in the regional championship, and, and we're hitting shots that are just unbelievable, you know. And then a week later, uh, you can't get them to fall, and that's just that's kind of how this game goes. And at this point in time of the year, um, the team that you know in our in our way of thinking, you know, a, a team that can defend and do the small things, and a team that can make shots, you know, on on, on that given night is the team that's going to win. And uh, and that's what happened last night. You know, um, hats off to to Goreville and Coach Tripp. Um, you know, they they showed up and and they did that exactly that. And that's why they uh, they came out with it last night. Well, you know, Coach, uh, basketball is a long season. It's been a long, grueling grind. This uh, tipped off playing games in December, and now here we are in March. And uh, it's been a long season. There's been a lot of ups and downs. But uh, you have to be very proud of your kids and all the success you have had this season. You know, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's been an up-and-down ride from, you know, the start at, at DuCoin and, and going 1-4 and, four and you know, and then climb back and having a, a good run there in between the, before the Christmas tournament and be able to play in a, this, the championship bar tournament. And, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, went to another little low there, at, you know, at the BIT with some sickness. And, uh, you know, but we bounced back strong. And, uh, you know, hats off to our kids. They, they fought all year. Um, like you said, this is a long and grueling season. But, you know, we are able to go 11-1 in the conference, be conference champions. Um, able to win a regional and able to get to you know to the Sweet 16 and you know like what we talked last night in the, in the locker room after the game, uh, you know at at that moment it's it's a it's a pretty tough tough moment um, because no matter how far you go you always want one more um, and, and you know and we want, we wanted one more last night when it was over with but at, at some point in time you know that that pain's gonna relieve and they're going to realize how special the year they had oh yeah you know there was a lot of teams that like to trade places with you last night they were they were there watching and yuns were still performing so you know that that gets lost kind of in the shuffle and like you said we're all greedy we always want more but uh to be in the final 16 that says a lot for your kids and your program Absolutely, and, and you know, and like I said, that, that's something that uh, you know that we'll get to remember. Um, we made a lot of moments and a lot of memories this year, and uh, you know, and that's what I felt that you know one of one of my main jobs is is to uh, you know let these kids know um, when those moments happen and, and, and to give them those memories that they're going to be able to share with their kids one day, and uh, you know they're going to look back and be able to tell their little boys or little girls one day that they were playing the Sweet Sixteen and be one of the final sixteen teams in the state of Illinois. And hopefully that's something that they'll be proud of one day. Well, Shane, you know, uh, your your team are a group of great young men. They conduct themselves very well. They represented your school and your community, and you have to be uh, proud of that. I know I am just as a fan of basketball to come and see teams like your team play last night and conduct themselves in the way the game's meant to be played. Well, you know, thank you for that. Um... I appreciate that, you know, and, and like I've stated many times, uh, you know, my, my faith is the base of, you know, everything we do. And so I just hope people can see an extension of that, you know, in these kids, how they play, how they conduct themselves, because, you know, they are great kids. They're going to be great husbands one day. They're going to be great fathers. And, uh, you know, and that's something that, that they're going to be a part of a lot longer than playing basketball. How about the atmosphere? Um, so, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say, how about the no, atmosphere and the fan support that you had last night from your community? I mean, they're just overwhelming the the, the support you had from your community. Absolutely, because that was not a not a short drive down there. No, <laughs> you know, and, and so it, it was, it's overwhelming. You know, and it's great just because people love, um, you know, the community and how you know, it's funny how God can take a a, a game of basketball and bring a whole community together. Um, it's, you know, it's something special to, to realize and to look at. And, uh, you know, Todd and I were talking before the game, and, uh, you know, we were looking at both sides and all that. And, uh, 
you know, it was just a pretty cool moment. You know, they say that gym seats 2,500, and uh, there weren't very many open seats left uh, at tip off. So it was a pretty cool moment to, to have, and, uh, you know, thankful um, not just from our community, but their community also that those boys were able to get that type of uh, respect and support last night. Yeah, Shane, I, I estimated there was around 2,400 there last night. We had a little over 1,100 on the website follow the game of people that couldn't get there. So, you know, when you throw those together, uh, that was a pretty hot ticket for Southern Illinois basketball last night. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, you know, that's one thing. And obviously I'm biased because I grew up in small town USA and I'm still a part of small town USA. But I think, you know, small town basketball is one of the most special things that there is um, because of that last night. Um, you know, you talk about that many people watching a class 1A basketball game. That, that's pretty cool. I know there's a lot of people who have their own opinions on the four class system. Um, you know, and I've got mine and I think it's something special that, that communities like Cesar Valier and Goreville were able to experience last night because that's, um, you know, that's something that didn't happen uh, before. Yeah. You know, Todd, uh, it's or, sorry about that, Shane. It, uh, it's amazing you brought that up. Uh, myself and Tom Malding last night talked about that on our way. As we was pulling out of the parking lot, Tom said, you know, people, uh, some people have a good feeling about the four-class system. Some have a bad feeling. He said they ought to be here tonight. They should have been here and experienced this uh, because these teams – would not have experienced what they experienced last night if it had still been a two-class or, system. Or the communities. Or the communities, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. You know, that's what everybody looks at, the attendance. And, and I know the whole thing with, the, you know, it's watered out. But, you know, that's fine. But it's, it's, the, it's the, those moments last night that creates that you can't replace. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Well, Shane, uh, we appreciate your time on the sports couch this morning. Again, a tough loss last night, but what a tremendous season for you and your Red Devils basketball program. A lot to, to be proud of and remember, and I think it's uh, something that's going to be special in the, in the hearts and lives of these young men for, for years to come, and, and I know that to be true. So uh, thanks again, and have yourself a good weekend and get some rest, all right? All right, will do. And, and, and thank you guys for what you do for high school sports and uh, covering these boys and, and allowing them to, to be seen and be heard. So thank you for what you guys do for them also. All Appreciate right. it. Thanks, Shane. Take care. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Shane Garner, head coach of Cesar Lear Red Devils, a tough loss, but, um, uh, you know, he made some very, very good comp- uh, comments there that are so true that these uh, young men that he coached, it's more than, than just coaching them to play the game of basketball. They're going to grow up to be uh, – you know, great, um, great fathers and husbands and, and young men. And, you know, uh, you got to go through things like this to, to learn from that. But they'll look back on this one day and they'll say, you know what? I was part of something really special. I was part of a Sweet 16 team. And, and like you said, Danny, there's a lot of, a lot of people that would have traded places with them last night. A I whole mean, bunch. I mean, the folks, at, uh, the folks at Woodlawn and Weber, you know, would love to have been there last night. But, uh, unfortunately, they weren't. So, uh Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. But what a battle, 48-44 to 44 as Goreville wins it over Cesar Valier. And, again, Goreville will punch their ticket to the SIU Arena this Tuesday night against Mawequa Central A&M, who we really don't know a whole lot about. Well, you know, like I said. Just look at the scores. That's all we know. They're know. eight miles south of Decatur, so that yeah. tells you how far north they are. And the thing about that is that Central A&M doesn't know a whole lot about Goreville either. Oh, no. You know, I mean, seriously. Uh, so uh, it's going to be one of those things where you're trying to, like you said, go on a fact-finding mission between now and Tuesday night and and just try to prepare the best you can. But a lot of it's going to be adjustments on the fly Tuesday night in that game because they're not going to know a lot about each other. Now, now the other game, you know, with Mount Carmel and Pinckneyville, I think they'll have a better understanding of each other and how they do their offense and defense before the game. But I, I just think with Goreville and Central A&M, they're going to be – a lot of changes on the fly. Well, you know, it's it's always like Phil Lieb says, though. You know, you head into a game like that, uh, a lot of times it comes down to, hey, I'm going to try to be as good as I can be at what I do, mm-hmm. and I'm going to try to make you stop me instead right. of me worrying about stopping you. Let's just do what we do to 100% of our capability, right. and if it's good enough, it's good enough. If it's not, hey, we mm-hmm. gave it everything we had, and we done all we could do, 
and yeah. we're still winners when we get home. Well, and like Coach Tyler Buss and Mount Carmel said here earlier this morning in their game last night against T-Town, he said, you know, we went in there with this game plan to run all these different sets and things like that, but he said T-Town was taking a lot of that stuff away from us. So he said we went to plan B, and we went uh, five out and spread the floor a little bit and you know try to break down the, the driving lanes and things like that and create one-on-one, and he said it worked. Uh, you know, uh, this game of basketball is all about adjustments. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I thought Goreville made some adjustments at halftime last night. They come out. Uh, they run a couple sets for Dunn. He'd sat on the bench. He was fresh. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hit two big baskets. They went from six down to up one in about the blink of an eye. And that was just kind of the changing point yeah. in the game. And they did the same thing against Weber Township the other night. Mm-hmm. Weber kind of controlled the first half. And then Goreville come out and took over the second half. And, uh, it was uh, it was just a great atmosphere for basketball. Oh, the, the shots of the crowd there last night. I mean, you know, that was just that was intense. That was really intense. And and like we alluded to a little bit ago in the conversation with Shane, if it wasn't a four class system, that game and that atmosphere and that experience last night for both the fans, coaches, and players would not have existed because in a two-class system, neither one of those teams likely would have been there last night. Goreville wins their first ever sectional ever championship yeah. in school history. And if it's a two-class system, they're still looking for that. Right. Yeah, I'm afraid that would be the case. All right, when we come back, we are going to talk to a, a very happy Coach Gus Gillespie of the Marion Wildcats. They won their first regional in a long, long time. I can't wait to find out how many years it's been. I know it's been a long time. We'll talk to him coming up next. Stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. Real Life Radio thanks Fairfield Printing and Graphics for their partnership in local Christian radio ministry. Fairfield Printing and Graphics offers custom sizing for banners and signs, as well as yard signs, corrugated signs, and metal signs. Fairfield Printing and Graphics also specializes in custom t-shirts, business cards, wedding invitations, hats, bags, and much more. They are located at number 5 Williamson Drive in Fairfield, and their phone number is 842-4048. Underwriting on the Vine is made possible by Iconic Studio in Fairfield. If you're looking for something different, Iconic Studio in Fairfield specializes in modern, high-fashion images with an unlimited supply of backgrounds. They are national award-winning photographers at Iconic Studio in Fairfield. Their phone number is 842-9542. And their website is IconicStudio.com. Joe's Pizza in Mount Vernon is a faithful underwriting sponsor of 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. Joe's Pizza offers Italian cuisine as well as delicious sandwiches, salads, and desserts. Joe's Pizza also features daily pasta and pizza specials and all-you-can-eat spaghetti on Thursdays. Joe's Pizza is located at 819 Jordan Street in Mount Vernon. Their phone number is 242-2600 and their website is orderjoes.com. Welcome back to the Sports Couch here live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming on The Vine website at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. And uh, let's go back to Class 3A Regional Championships from last night. Uh, again, I was at Mount Vernon last night uh, watching the Centralia-Salem game, which the Orphans won over the Wildcats 57-44. But I got to tell you, I would love to have been at Carbondale last night, Danny, to watch that finale as the Marion Wildcats come from behind and beat Carbondale on Carbondale's floor 61-59. to What a wild game. I would love to have seen it. And uh, let's talk to somebody who lived it right now. That's Coach Gus Gillespie of the Marion Wildcats. Good morning, Gus. How are you? Morning, guys. Doing fine. Oh, my goodness sakes. What a crazy battle that was last night. We kept getting score updates uh, during our game, and it uh, looked like it was close, but you you were behind most of the game, but you found a way to get it done in the end. Tell us about it. Yeah, the uh, you know, 
<clears throat> two weeks ago, kind of the, the same type of game. We got off to a slow start, a slow first quarter. Uh, and really, the third quarter, Bean just really took over. He made some big-time plays, big-time shots. And, mm-hmm. and we, we were definitely on the ropes. And uh, about six minutes to go, we were able to uh, – you know, make them turn it over a little bit more uh, up our pressure, and our, our kids uh, hit some big shots, and then Lacey had a big-time drive there at the end to uh, to lay it in, and we were able to uh, hang on to the, you know, hang on for the win. Yeah, I saw the uh, the highlight of, of Lacey laying it up at the end. Uh, what a wild time that was. Place went nuts, and uh, gosh, you guys got to be so happy and so proud. And how many years has it been since Marion has won a regional? Uh you know what? I, I'm wanting to say in 2014 uh, they won the regional and, and advanced to the sectional championship when uh, Coach Hawkins was here at Marion. Uh, someone told me I think that's only the second regional in in maybe in 23 years or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. You know our our kids uh, our kids had to fight for it. We beat a heck of a Benton team uh, Tuesday night. Uh, and then had to turn around and beat Carbondale again on their home floor. And, and uh, you know, this senior bunch, uh, they've had a lot of coaching changes. This year has not been easy. January we were struggling. But uh, everything kind of changed in February with our practice habits. Uh, practice habits became better, and it's carried over to, uh, you know, to the, to the game and the game performance. Well, I, I would venture to say that most teams that are in postseason right now in 3A don't want to play the Marion Wildcats because you're playing your best basketball of the year right now. Uh, you're dangerous. You're playing with a lot of confidence, uh, just peaking at the right time. And, and I'd say most teams don't want to play Marion right now. Well, you know, uh, th- this time of the year, everyone that's left is good. And, and you've got to be, uh, you know, I don't know much about Columbia. I, I know this, that we're going to have to play good basketball for four quarters. But our kids are playing with some confidence. Uh, I've said it all along. I told them, I said, guys, listen, uh, we're doing a lot of new stuff. We're probably going to struggle at times. Hang in there with us. And maybe in February, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start playing. And, and, it, and it's kind of kind of play true. And, and I feel like our kids are playing with confidence. And, and there's a sense of urgency and hunger uh, with, with Marion. They haven't had the success that the – the Vernon, Centralia's, and Carbondale's have had, and, and uh, I think these kids know that maybe they can put their place in history with Marion basketball. Well, absolutely, and uh, I don't know a whole lot about Columbia either, other than the fact that uh, you know winning that game last night over Alton Marquette, you know they had to play some great basketball because Marquette came in undefeated, and I know they had played each other, I think, a couple times earlier in the year, but Marquette always got them, but Columbia found a way to get it done last night, so you know they're playing some great basketball right now too. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, hey, you know, everyone's two and zero going into the to the sectional, and uh, that's how you've got to approach it. And, and to uh, up in a team that was undefeated uh, speaks volumes about how well they must have played last night. So we'll ha- hey, hey, we're going to have our hands full, and uh, I, I told our guys to relax last night, relax today, and until we have practice, and then we've got to focus in on you know the task at hand. But uh, Hey, it was a big win for our kids, big win for our community and our school, and, and just proud, proud of the guy. Well, I don't want to put the cart before the horse because obviously you've got to take care of business with Columbia before you think about either East St. Louis or uh, Centralia. But, uh, you know, you played a pretty wild game up there at Centralia just a week or two ago too. And, and even though you lost that game in overtime, I think that game probably did a lot to uh, help your kids well and, and give them uh, confidence and and um, kind of push you toward the point where you're at now. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, uh, after the game, we were disappointed. We felt like we had a great plan to go to Centralia and win, and, and we lost in overtime. And, uh, you know, before we left, we said, hey, we well, let's make it back here. and uh, let, Let's make it back to, to play in that sectional. And uh, like you said, you know, I, I never think about I think about the next game, and the next game's Columbia. But I know this, we're going to be playing at Centralia again, and, and that's something that we wanted to do, and, and uh, uh, we'll just have to take care of business. Well, and since you've played there on the big stage and the big crowd, I mean, you're not going to be intimidated, uh, you know, come uh, next week in the sectional in your game against Columbia because you're, you're already going to be used to those surroundings and things like that, so it's not going to be anything that's going to shell shock you. Yeah, I mean, uh, our guys have played there before, obviously lower-level games and, and uh, play a lot of seniors that have played in that gymnasium. It was my first uh, – it was my first trip over there. You know, uh, when I was at Centralia, we still played in the old Trout, and 
and uh, you know it was new to me, but it was uh, kind of old to those guys. And hopefully we'll just respond and and uh, and play a tough game. Let's talk about your community support uh, because you had a crowd there last night at, at Carbondale, and uh, the folks of Marion have really started to rally around your Wildcat program, and they're getting excited about what's happening, aren't they? Yeah, we uh, we had a big crowd, student body uh, just was unbelievable, and, and the energy and the excitement. The last uh, hey, the last two minutes was as loud. Uh, uh, as I've heard of Jim in a long time, and, and when we held on at the end, there was a big time eruption. And uh, you know, I, I, I again, I just feel like uh, you know these kids know that, that they can do something special, and, and uh, uh, very excited and excited for the community. Well, you know, only 14 miles separates Marion and Carbondale, and uh, that's really starting to turn into a rivalry. And I say rivalry now because Marion's winning some games now. It used to be it was always Carbondale dominating Marion, but not so much the case anymore, and so it has become a good rivalry, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, hey, here's the deal. Carbondale, we talked about it this week. Uh, you know, you're looking at a team, uh, a program in Carbondale that's been to the state tournament. They've had some great players. And- and just, you know, long-term success where Marion's been kind of hit and miss and, and said, hey, you know, we got to get the mentality that we can go compete and we do things the right way. And, and uh, felt like the key to the game was, uh, you know, I, keeping them off the glass, competing on the glass. And we didn't do that. They killed us. They stormed the glass the first half. Uh, the, the tide turned a little bit when we were able to turn, you know, turn them over and then get some defensive rebounds. So Carmdale is just very, very good on on the offensive rebound. Yeah, that's great. Everybody come out of the game healthy last night, Coach? Yeah, every, everyone. You know, Cole Schaefer, he, he was sick at halftime and, and uh, hey, showed some toughness there in the second half. We needed him. But, I, hey, he was, uh, he, he was very sick at halftime and responded. Those kids, uh, hey, they, were, they, they knew that was a special game. We're going to fight through it. And it was just a, uh, you know, special, special night for everyone. So I guess today you're trying to probably gather some film and uh, do a little fact finding mission to learn as much as you can about Columbia. Huh? Yeah, you kind of scramble mode. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, a team that we don't play that uh, that I'm not familiar with at all. And uh, you know, today you got to, you know, kind of came up, come up with a little scout and practice your guys, get some shots up, and and then really do some work and and, and get going on Monday. It's a short turnaround. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, anymore I worry about what we do more so than the other team. And, and I feel like uh, if we defend and rebound, that's what we need to do, make some shots. And that's kind of been the thing that we've been working on. Sometimes our guys, uh, we, we, we've got to improve what we do, and, and I think we'll play a higher level of basketball. Well, that's a good point because they've got to worry about stopping you just as much as you got to worry about stopping them. So if you do what you do best, uh, that's their problem on trying to stop you. Yeah, sometimes you can get caught up in, in too much information and information overload when you try to just prepare, 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 when really you're just coaching your guys. And, and, and that's kind of maybe what we'll focus in on today and Monday and, and you know, get some tendencies and, and, and learn about Columbia as we go. But, uh, hey, it's a big, it's a big game. I, I know I'm on the air there, and I, I, I just want to wish my dad a happy birthday. He's uh, 80 years old today. He's awesome. He's in Lawrenceville. I don't I don't know if he can uh, hear me there in Lawrenceville, but I uh, just want to wish him a happy birthday. Well, that is awesome. Certainly happy birthday to him. That is special. 80 years old. That's great, Gus. That's awesome. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate your time on the Sports Couch this morning. Again, uh, best of luck as you prepare for your battle against Columbia next week. And um, super job last night in that regional championship. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right. That is Gus Gillespie, head coach of the Marion Wildcats. And, uh, yeah, I guess I had forgot about the fact that, um, Danny, that they had um, they had won a regional here a few years ago when um, uh, Coach Hawkins was there. But prior to that, I think you were going back to, like, the 70s oh, yeah. or the 80s since uh, Marion had won a regional. So, uh, again, it doesn't come along very often. Uh, you have to enjoy it when it happens. you got to enjoy it while it, when you can while it happens. You are exactly right. But uh, Gus has done a great job down there at Marion, and uh, I hope the folks at Marion are smart enough to keep him around because uh, they've had a coaching carousel down there. Be interesting. For whatever reason, they've be had a coaching carousel. Be interesting to see. Yeah, it sure will be. But uh, uh, that's going to be a, an exciting sectional up there at, at Centralia. you got the Orphans against East St. Louis on one side and, and Marion and Columbia on the other side. You know, uh, I'm sure everybody's wanting uh, Centralia uh, – 
Marion rematch. But I'm telling you, that East St. Louis team, Yep. Uh, I don't know how they've done it. I don't know of any other team that's had three coaches in one season <laughs> and be playing in a section. Because, you know, the system changes every time with a different coach, you know, uh, a different offense. I would I like mean, to know. I'd like to know more about that story. I mean, that's, that's rough right there. I never heard of such a fiasco. Oh, my goodness sakes. Hey, you see, I've got my green Sparty shirt on today because yeah. the Big Ten tournament is going on and uh, big uh, big semifinals going on today. You only got four teams left. You got Michigan State and Michigan today at one o'clock, and then later this afternoon at three thirty, it's Purdue and Penn State. And how about Penn State beating Ohio State again for the third time this season? Yeah, you know, that's just one of those things there, Danny. Where even though Ohio State having a fantastic year, and you know they're ranked thirteenth in the country, and you know, real high RPI and looks like they're still headed for the NCAA tournament and stuff. There's just sometimes that teams just match up well with other teams for, for whatever the reason. And, you know, Penn State is just the kryptonite to Ohio State. They just can't, they just can't beat them. Penn State's beat them three times. Uh, Penn State does some things that Ohio State can't compensate for. And uh, sometimes you just have bad matchups, yeah. you know, and – uh Penn State's been able to get the job yeah. done, but I'd say it'll be the Michigan State Spartans and Purdue going at it head to head. Well, it might be. Uh, I talk about another matchup. How about Wisconsin and how they match up with a Sparty? Uh, Michigan State was able to pull out the three point win yesterday with Wisconsin, but just a week earlier they played to a five point game. Again, there's something about the Badgers and the way the Badgers play and match up with Michigan State that they just give them fits. Well, Michigan, I didn't see that game, but my guess is uh, Wisconsin really controlled the tempo of the game. It was probably in the, the score was probably in the fifties, uh, barely sixty. It was sixty three sixty. So yeah. you're pretty close. Yeah, yeah, they so, did control the tempo. Uh, that's not a pace Michigan State wants to play at. No, they'd rather be up in the eighties, right? If they can at be. least upper seventies. Yeah, they can be. So, uh, uh, yeah, you had uh, Purdue beat Rutgers yesterday, eighty two seventy five, and Michigan beat Nebraska seventy seven fifty eight. Illinois, you know, they lost their very first game of the tournament and got out right away to Iowa. It's just been a bad, bad year for the Illini. 14-18 and 18 for the Illini. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when Brad Underwood gets some of his own players in there now. But mm -hmm. you got to remember he's had a lot of young kids, uh, yeah. a lot of young kids that learned playing at Belleville, East or West. Right, right. And the Big Ten is a whole different story. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. But it'll be interesting to see if uh, he can close that recruiting gap mm -hmm. around that St. Louis metro area over there or whether Kunzo Martin is going to take control of that area at Missouri. Well, I think a lot of the, the players that are on the current roster for Illinois will not be there next year. I think he's going to clean house, and uh, you know, a lot of those guys will be gone. And like you said, a lot of his own recruits coming in, and we'll see if that chemistry is better than the chemistry they had this year because he just didn't have the talent or the size this year. I'm going to tell you, you cannot win in the Big Ten with a six eight kid. Yeah, well, and only one six eight kid. That's right. That's all they had. One six eight. They had kid. nobody else to go with you him cannot, at all. You cannot win with that no. in the Big Ten. You have to have a lot of a lot of guys that are that size or bigger. You can't win with that anywhere in college basketball yeah, no. of any size. Yeah. Speaking of college basketball, too, in the Missouri Valley Conference tournament, uh, SIU is in the Final Four. I, I wouldn't have thought that at the beginning of the year, uh, but they are playing Illinois State today in one semifinal, and uh, Bradley and Loyola in the other. So, you know, first time that the Salukis have been in the Final Four of the Valley Tournament in quite a while, and so um, that's good. I wouldn't have thought it early in the season, and I wouldn't have thought it the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. But they had it kind of put together, and then they just had two terrible, terrible losses where they reverted back to a lot of the problems of the early season. And I thought, man, the wheels have come off. But they were able to regroup and get one there last night, and they'll have a big challenge today. Yeah, the Slukies come in at 20 and 12. Uh, the Redbirds are 17 and 14. On the other side of the bracket, Loyola, what a year they're having. Loyola, 26 and 5. And, you know, they used to kind of be the patsy of the conference there for a while, but now they're the stud. Yeah, you know, uh, them and Valparaiso have been a couple good additions mm -hmm. to the Missouri Valley. And 
looks like uh, we have a chance at least to get one Illinois team in the NCAA tournament. Uh, yeah, I would say so. They're all Illinois teams that are left, <laughs> so yeah, pretty good odds there when it's four for four. But, uh, yeah, um, definitely a change of, of, of teams there in the in the Missouri Valley Conference. Northern Iowa down a little bit this year, uh, perhaps. Loyola took care of them by four points, although that was a close game. And the Slukies won yesterday over Missouri State 67 to uh, to 63. But, uh, yeah, Valparaiso, they um, lost in their first round to Missouri State 83-79. You had to have somebody else enter the conference after you had, uh, you know, you're losing – you lose Creighton and uh, Wichita, Wichita State. Wichita and, State's making a nice run in that tournament there. And mm-hmm. They just got a great program there for a small they do. 1A. Yeah, they do. Yeah, for uh, what we used to think was a mid-major. Yeah. Yeah, they've uh, really kind of took that program to the next level. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. How about uh, baseball? The Cardinals? Uh, their uh, big uh, pitching acquisition, uh, Bud Norris, uh, he left the game, I guess, early because some kind of injury or whatever. So here we go, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the Cardinals do not have enough starting pitching to be serious contenders. Yeah, I don't think that they do either. Uh, you know, you can live this pipe dream that Mose likes living in. Thinking that you got all these young arms, mm-hmm. that's what you have. A bunch of young arms and a bunch of washed-up veterans. Did have a home run by uh, Ozuna yesterday. Uh, he he was, hit he, one earlier in the week. Yeah. Did you see that oh, thing? Yeah, monster, yeah. That thing went over five buildings in the yeah. parking lot. He's definitely got power. There's there's wow. no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, Wainwright pitched two innings yesterday, walked three, and gave up two hits. I don't know if Adams got it or not. I don't know if he's going to really be effective. Uh, you know, I, the the Cardinals just got too many what ifs in that starting pitching. You right. know, Adams uh, running on fumes, uh, Miskalis. You know, uh, it's just kind of like the new pitching coach told him when he came out of the game last Sunday. Said, "Son, uh, what uh, what got you hurt?" He said, "Fastballs." He said, yeah, he said, in this league, anybody can hit 91-mile-an-hour fastballs, especially mm-hmm. when they're straight. Yeah, yeah, that's right. When they have no movement on them at all, it's you know, real easy. And uh, I, I I don't guess I understand this. They've thrown enough money at some of these retread people to go and sign a decent pitcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like we're – I don't know. I, I I don't understand the thought process. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I don't either. It just, uh, I don't know what changed. You know, when the season ended, they had this agenda, and if they would have went and done what mm-hmm. they said they were going to do. We'd be sitting a lot different right now. We signed one guy. Mm-hmm. Then we just all at once abandoned everything else that we said we needed. Mm-hmm. They needed to get an established closer. Mm-hmm. I don't see one of them. Mm-hmm. They said they needed to maybe look at some starting pitching. I don't see any of them. I mean, you know, Bud Norris, a retread, that's not the uh, answer. Some so. guy – give some guy from Japan uh, $15 million and he couldn't make it when he was here. That's why he went to Japan. Mm-hmm. You know, if baseball's so good in Japan, do you not think we would be seeing it all over national TV? Right, right. You know, uh, it's just not the level of competition that we have here and – then we keep saying, well, we got flattery and we've got this one and we've got that one. But you know what? They're still young kids and they're unproven. They may be a bunch of 3A baseball players. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we heard it about uh, Gritchick, how mm-hmm. great he was and mm-hmm. what he was going to do. He was tearing it up in AAA. Mm-hmm. When we come to the major leagues, he was a 240 hitter. Just never did, uh, you know, uh, never did bloom into what uh, the potential supposedly was. I I see the Cardinals overvaluing a lot of their talent, mm-hmm. and I think you're starting to see some other people agree with that. Yeah. Uh, we want to say we got major league players, and we got a bunch of three A players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got some major league players that can put you in third, fourth, or fifth place. Mm-hmm. Myself as a Cardinal fan, that's not what I'm accustomed to. Right. And now with Milwaukee making some of the moves they made to get better, 
Um, and yeah. Milwaukee's going to make another move. Milwaukee's going to – they're going to get a pitcher just as soon as this mm-hmm. market determines. Lance Lynn is probably going to sign with Milwaukee. Yeah, that's the thing that people don't understand. There's still free agents out there. For about $12 million. Yeah, there's still that's free projection. agents out there that are unsigned. We've already started spring training, and there are still players without a job right now. Oh, yeah. Good some, players without Some a job. players that they – uh, Jake Arietta, they thought was going to get two hundred ten million dollars over about five <laughs> years, and this guy's not even got it. Doesn't have a job. The hottest commodity he's got is the Philadelphia Phillies. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the Philadelphia Phillies are going to give him a five-year, two hundred ten million dollar mm-hmm. contract. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. If Scott Boris can pull that off, he ought to be the representative for every. Well, I think that most of the owners have made the decision that they're not going to do these long-term contracts anymore. They've gotten burned by them too many times, and they've decided. Here's a good area. It's 32 years old. Right. Are you going to give this guy a five-year contract? At, no, he's going to be 37 years old at the end of this thing. Right. And you're going to give him $200 million over that? No. Not going to work. That's insanity. Yeah, not going to work. So, you know, if you could sign him for a couple of years, yeah, he's probably got enough gas in the tank for a couple of years. Mm-hmm possibly three but you better get it front loaded Mm -hmm. to where you're not counting on much on that final year and i think management has finally shifted around to that and the players association is not like it and they're gonna have to try matter of fact i heard some veteran the other day he said i'm 30 years old and he said that used to be young he said i look around now and he said the next closest guy to me is 24 years old (laughs) how about that yeah he yeah. said, "He said of the starting group around me, their average age mm-hmm. is from twenty three to twenty five." Yeah, well, again, because the the owners are getting away from doing the long term contracts, that's why you don't see Jake Arrieta, Lance Lynn, and some of these other what were high profile free agents. They're still unsigned, and here we are in spring training, and a week or two has already been played, and you got guys without a job. The only hope they have of getting a a decent contract is that some major player gets hurt, some major pitcher. Mm-hmm. And that could easily ha- that could easily happen. You know, but uh, other than that, Lance Lynn could have got $17 million from the Cardinals for a year. Mm-hmm. He's going to wind up in that 10 to $12 million range. Yeah, he's going to wish he would have taken it. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Well, uh, I think we're about out of time here, about to wrap things up. And um, this is probably going to be our last sports couch for a while because, uh, well, we're at the end of the basketball season because these teams we talked to today that were winners uh even if they win on tuesday or wednesday and advance on to you know the, the following round it'll be kind of hard to catch up with them next weekend with it being state tournament time and all that yeah you know it's it's been a a long basketball season and we had a football before that so uh we're typically here from from august to, to march and here we are in march so it's been a been a great run uh, I want to thank all the coaches and everybody that took time out of their schedule every week yeah. to visit with us, talk about their kids. Uh, we've had great shows week after week. Uh, I've enjoyed it immensely myself. Uh, well, it gives been- them a chance to talk about their players and, and, and their communities as well and, and give credit where credit's due, and we're happy to do that. You know, I uh, – want to thank everybody i i was thinking i was going to wrap up the basketball season a couple of weeks ago and <laughs> we've been in the gym uh basically on request uh for the last two weeks yeah and uh we've got to see some great basketball and i've enjoyed it immensely and uh, yeah thanks to you for going down to a uh, hardin county and making that long trip so that uh, so many people could watch those games this week because uh you know without you and the camera lady going down there it, it wouldn't happen and you know, that's evidenced by how many people logged on to watch the game last night. So. Well, you know, we had had about 1,260 on on Tuesday night. Uh, we'd have had that many on Wednesday night if we could have made that trip, but we had other commitments. Uh, like I said, we were we were kind of planning on wrapping basketball up a couple <laughs> weeks ago and maybe spectating just a little bit, but uh, there's no better seat in the house than setting up or where I sit. Oh, yeah. You had a good view there last night. I loved it. That's a neat gym down there, too, at Hardin County. Uh, question is, did you get to uh, eat any fish down there? Did you and uh, Claire make it to any of the places to have any of the good fish they've got down there in Hardin no, County? No, we had a hospitality room. We mm-hmm. had uh, Italian beef last night. Uh-huh. And uh, Tuesday night, I don't even remember what we had. See, it's now you're been, making me hungry. 
it's been so so much <laughs> time and travel and stuff between that and with the water. Uh, a lot of deer activity along those roadways last night. Yeah, I bet the uh, water was pretty high down there. Uh, it's uh, been a, been a great great season of basketball on Fox's dot net and area sports dot net. Yep. We've covered a lot of games, had a lot, a lot of, of good times, and uh, a lot of games. Yeah, look forward to seeing next season. A lot of guests, and uh, again, yeah, thanks to uh, definitely all the guests, the coaches that have taken time out of their schedule on. Saturday mornings to uh, join us throughout the the sports season. Uh, it's been fun and, and good to talk to all of you. And, again, thanks to our sponsors, underwriters, that make the programming possible not only here on the sports couch but uh, our programming uh, throughout each each day and each night. You, you know, know it's kind of, uh, kind of like last night after the ball game. First thing Todd Tripp said to me is he said, you're my lucky charm. You may be going to the <laughs> SIU arena with me on Tuesday night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, and that, that's some of the great things that I sat back and remember. Uh, myself and Shane Garner had a nice talk after the game last night. Yeah. You just don't uh, – memories that are made. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are, these are great people. And, uh, you know, they put in so much time and effort – uh, with their kids, and they, uh, you know, put their uh, their heart and soul into it, and and it and it shows. And uh, you know, talking to the guys that we had on this morning, Andy Fernbacher, Tyler Buss, uh, Todd Tripp, Shane Garner, Gus Gillespie. I mean, those are all great, great guys, great gentlemen, great coaches, and they are really doing a lot to really mold the um, the minds and the um, the type of men, young men that their players are going to turn into. You know, Randy, I guess one thing, I want to challenge the fans of basketball in all these towns. Mm -hmm. You guys need to sit back and realize what you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard so much growling and complaining and moaning and browbeating of coaches this season. Folks, I'm telling you, for what these guys get paid for, you keep it up, they're not going to be there. Right. You're not yeah. going to have these guys doing this. Mm -hmm. Uh, they say, oh, well, there's going to be somebody else come and do it. You know what? They say the same thing about officiating. Mm -hmm. There's less and less of them. But if people do not change their attitude with coaches and quit being so individual driven that your son's the greatest player or your daughter's the greatest player and they're mm -hmm. getting screwed over by a coach and all this kind of stuff that you hear night in and night out at the gym, those are the things that make it not fun for me right and a lot of coaches are stepping out of the profession because of that it's just gotten to be too much uh, stress and pressure for them and that's uh, and that's a shame because they're going to be replaced with people that don't have the same mindset don't have the same uh morals and values and uh, leadership skills that these gentlemen like we talked to this morning have well you're seeing it at the grade school level people don't people don't realize it mm -hmm. but uh used to you had coaches that were in the school system they were mm -hmm. teachers in the school system yeah. ain't worth it to them now right. so what you're starting to see is you're starting to see parents come in and take these jobs mm -hmm. they do it for one or two years while their son or daughter's mm -hmm. playing and then they move on and they're yeah. not doing it for the right reasons no no they're not they're doing it because they've got a iron in the fire and selfish when that, reasons when that fire goes out yeah. then we're out of the deal yeah. and you're going to see this translate up to the yeah. high school level folks i'm yeah. telling you yeah. so i challenge you to all think about what's going on in your communities and maybe mm -hmm. take a look at the big picture yeah, that's exactly right good, good advice there that's going to wrap it up danny thanks so much for being alongside on the ride here on the sports couch and thanks to everybody for listening and watching and uh, have yourself a great weekend all right Take care, and as always, you can catch the Sports Couch in archive at areasports.net. So long, everybody. This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Blueford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon. And now on translator, W288CO Centralia, broadcasting at 105.5. A service of Real Life Radio Foundation.